All right, so I had a request to look at uh, water and uh, glass to do dispersion and caustics, uh, which is a kind of a more advanced way for the light to work its way through the glass. You can see that the, there's a scene I've rendered just to test every setting here. Um, and I'm just going to talk you through a few of the details to make this effect happen. Uh, so what all I have here is just a plane modeled, uh, kind of a, a pint glass sized object and uh, some water on the inside. And this is all done in options and in material. Uh, so here in the materials I have a, a water uh, and to create the water I have actually uh, no diffuse color and absolutely 100% transparency. The color of the water comes uh, through the refraction layer. So I've added to that a refraction and a reflection layer. Um, the reflection layer, the important thing here, is to set that to 1.33. Um, similarly, under refraction, I have 1.33. Here I've set kind of a bluish hue for the color and a fog multiplier of 1. That just means that there is actually a little cloudiness to the water that would appear blue. Um, and for the water, I don't have dispersion turned on, but we'll look at that for the glass. Uh, so under glass, which is this one here, um, I just loaded by going right clicking and going load material. I loaded just the generic glass model that comes with V-Ray. Uh, if you don't have that for some reason, we can take a quick look. The color of the glass is gray, but it's 100% transparent. It's got a reflection of 1.55 under the IOR, uh, which means probably the refraction here is 1.55. Uh, again, I have a fog color of white that's 0.3. Uh, and here I turned on dispersion. Now dispersion is uh, a way that the light kind of uh, disperses uh, the spectrum of color within light. So white is, you know, as we can imagine, maybe white light, um, and within that is the entire uh, color spectrum. And so we'll notice that uh, slightly when, when we do this rendering. Uh, this option is typically turned off, uh, but by turning it on and controlling the Abbey number here, you can increase or decrease the amount the light disperses. So a lower Abbey number would be a higher uh, kind of array where the light scatters more and a l higher Abbey number would be a, uh, a more tight-knit uh, dispersion. Uh, so I've applied the glass to the glass object and the water to the water object. The next thing we need to do is look at options. Uh, so a few things that I've done, one I have a physical camera turned on because I have this rectangular light so I want to control my shutter speed. Two, under environment, I've actually put in um, a bitmap, which is an HDRI. Uh, you can see that this is just the camera, but this is again something that ships with Rhino. Uh, and under materials, there's HDRIs, and I'm using this living room day. Uh, and that is, you have to make sure that you set your mapping type to environment and to mirror ball. The way this was made was taking a photograph of a, a mirrored ball. Uh, and I want that both in reflection and refraction. Uh, we won't see that in the scene, but it will provide some color and reflect reflectivity on the glass itself, which helps increase its realism. Um, output size is small right now just because it's a, it's a sample test rendering. Um, and the last tab, and this is new in V-Ray 1.5, is caustics. And so by turning on caustics, uh, the light is kind of uh, gathered and projected through the water and through the glass itself. Um, you can see that t the it's. I started out with a max photons, I believe at 60. Uh, if I increase them greater and greater, so these are kind of the agents that would be scattered through the scene and mapped, um, bouncing around and, and finally landing on this plane. Um, and then I, in, I can increase or decrease the amount of uh, kind of the strength of light that moves through. Here, using five for the glass works well. You may need to increase this if you want, you know, stronger caustics, or decrease it if you want weaker. Uh, the last thing to look at here is the search distance. So let's imagine that it, it kind of scatters all these little pellets through. Um, with a search distance, the, the strength of those lines uh, is is kind of uh, increased. So if you had two dots very close to each other, let's say a distance of three, it, that would kind of become a blob of light. Uh, what we want is a very soft glow out the, the back side of this light, so I've increased the search distance to 80 so that they really kind of look around for uh, more and more connectivity, um, and when they start to really spread out, we won't have glow uh, far beyond the pint glass itself.
Uh, so that just is a quick overview. Those are the settings to play with. Obviously we're going to need a light shining through the object. A, a generic kind of dome light isn't going to do it. Um, and what we'll see is if, if we look here at the section of the glass, there's a little bit of a hiccup here, I don't want that, but um, there's a lot of actually glass material at the bottom, so this should be glowing because it should capture light and bounce it around here. And then we should also get kind of a, a glow out the back, uh, the way you would expect to see with a, a real glass of water. Uh, so I'm going to let this render. Uh, one last warning with caustics and dispersion, uh, rendering time is greatly, greatly increased. So I'm going to fast forward and we'll talk about the results on the other side. All right, so there's the, the final rendering. Um, you can see with the white kind of light that gathers in the bottom of the cup, uh, kind of these weird facets. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on there. I'm actually thinking that that is probably caused because the water uh, cone, which maybe I can click here, that's actually touching the face of the glass, which is exactly what water would do. Um, but I'm thinking because there's a double surface there, there's a little confusion. So the, the probably the best option there would be to pull the water just inside of the glass. Um, additionally, we might be able to do just the top of the water uh, and let the, the the actual glass itself have no water in it, but just a water surface. That would be uh, two things to test out. But this is just to get the technique right or, and look at the two options. Or, I'm sorry, this isn't to get the technique uh, for the water modeling necessarily, but just to look at the options that get the dispersion and um, the caustics to work. Uh, so with those, uh, I might do a follow-up video uh, kind of looking at more kind of advanced settings. Um, and additionally, I'm going to upload a video uh, shortly looking at how to create kind of a, a natural water uh, something that would be not in a cup, but a pond or a lake or a pool, and how to create ripples and caustics with those ripples. So look for that again coming soon.